dystopian. Hello, it's Bricktopian, and this is Spongebob, Spongebob set. It's called Spongebob Good Neighbours at Bikini Bottom. It is number 3834. It has 425 pieces, and the age rating is 7 to 12. It was also released in the year 2009. I got this set because I'm a fan of Spongebob. And I also got this set because it has some good minifigures. But I mainly got this set because it comes with Gary the Snail, which I don't have. And I love the awesome printed shell. I'd like to say, well, this set is good, but it's also flawed. I do like the minifigures. They're the, definitely the best part of the set. The Gary Snail is very well done using a green cherry piece for the eye stalk. SpongeBob, of course, with his awesome expression. Nothing underneath, just this piece for him. You've got Squidward in his usual depressed expression, going, Oh my god, SpongeBob, how could you do that, SpongeBob? And then you've got, of course, Patrick, Patrick the dork, the dorky SpongeBob friend, Patrick. Just looks like there's nothing going on inside his head at all, just like a lot of people I've known in my life. Anyway, he looks very nice indeed. I love his printed pants or trousers, or whatever they are, shorts. And I even love the fact that you get a jellyfish that uses this unique piece, shaped piece. Which is, I think, a chef's hat, which is now it being used as, but in pink, trans pink. And it's just got two one by one studs in white to represent the little tentacle thing moving through the water. I wish it was completely one one single um, unique piece that had actual tentacles, but it's still pretty good. I still like how they did that. And then of course you get the famous Krabby Patty, which is Brick Bill, using studs and one of them shoe jumpers, whatever they're called, and also a normal circular 2x2 plate piece. I love the design of this, it's very simple, but it, they've used it lots of times in Spongebob sets and I do really like it and I like how they have different colour stud all the way around to represent the different ingredients like pickle, ketchup, mustard and then the burger itself. I think it's great how they did that and it comes with this little grill, which is what you put it on. It's quite small for the size of the burger, the burger looks massive compared to the grill, but I can forgive that. Also, the burger looks massive when compared to the minifigures as well. Look how big that is. Massive. Massive boy. But look. It does that. God knows why, but it does. It goes do 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 Gets a flag with it. You know, a barbecue flag, as most barbecues apparently have flags with them. No, I disagree, but you know. I like flags, so I'm welcome to have that. I don't mind having that. And then you get some awesome other accessories. You get this nice little deck chair for Squidward that comes with his umbrella so he can block out SpongeBob when he gets near and go, stay away from me. Oh, SpongeBob, whatever. Yeah, you get a little Gary Bell, which is extremely boringly designed because it's literally just a two by two round brick that's got a Gary sticker on it, which I think was a bit lame. But it's still good. I'm still happy to get Gary Bob so he doesn't starve to death. But yeah, I'm happy with that. And you get some other little things. So like you get a little chair for SpongeBob to sit in, which uses this piece, which I believe is a print, which looks pretty awesome. And then you get a bed for SpongeBob, his usual known bed. And it even has this a thing on it, so you can flick him up in the air. So when he's going flying off to work like a crazy person, you can go, wee, wee, wee. So you get that. Not bad, not bad at all. I can't say it's great, but it's not bad. Bit flat though, this headpiece. That should that is a very flat pillow. I mean look, it's the same flatness as the cover. Very crazy if you ask me. Squidward gets a little pink book, probably his diary. He's probably reading to himself because he loves himself so much. But you know, not bad. It's got nothing in it, but you can pretend, you can use your very um, small imagination. 
And then you get a TV for SpongeBob, which is very small, but then again, he has quite a small TV. It looks quite rectangular, though, compared to the squareness of it in the show, but you know, that's alright. Again, it's a sticker, though, which is a bit useless, but never mind. It's not a bad build, it's not that exciting, it's very basic, but it would do the job. And then you've got this weird little, um, ho like, water, um, just like tank thing that Spongebob uses. I don't even know what it's for. Is it for washing his car? I don't know. God knows. But I just could pretend it's a flamethrower for going around terrorising the village because, you know, Spongebob's sick of people making fun of him for being so happy. So he's going to go around terrorising Bikini Bottom with a flamethrower. You could do what you want. You can pretend what you like. And it goes on his head. So, you know, he's mad. His brain is actually powering a flamethrower to kill people. Shh. He looks very disturbed there, so you can tell he's on a rampage. But anyway, the build of this is quite fun. Use the nice yellow tubing, which is always nice to see. That looks like a face, but it's not. But who knows what it actually is, nobody. Anyway, I like this. This is snazzy, but there's not really you can do with it if you don't want it on SpongeBob, though. So it just sits nowhere, demanding its own business. And then you've got the awesome little boatmobile for Patrick, which is very basic, but does work very, very well. I love the shape of it. I love the wheels. I love the colour scheme of the black and the red, and with the white on top. It's got this weird little thing that projectile shoots this stud. God knows why. I don't know if that's supposed to be a bread roll, or if it's supposed to be a turd. I don't really know but it's welcome but I would not suggest putting it on there because it will get lost in literally half a second. The steering wheel is fun and all but it's a bit too central I wish this could hold two people rather than one but I'll let it slide because it is a small set. It's got a propeller on the back which looks good and all and you can put it at an angle which is fine. It seems a bit oversized propeller though for the boat but it still works. This is a fry pan, by the way. And, yeah, and then you've got the building itself, which is his house, which is obviously the best part of the set, apart from the minifigures, of course. And it's in this nice orange colour, which you don't get in many Lego sets. The bright orange, and it's got these bizarre lines of red in, which I don't think his set house in the actual series has this many red chunks in it. So it's kind of a bit strange, but... I don't mind because it adds a little bit of colour variation when building it. It just looks a bit too random though, if you ask me. I would have preferred it, I think, if it was all orange. I also feel like this window is a bit small. The window's a little bit smaller than they should be, which is another thing I'm not too much of a fan of. Plus, I don't like how this whole piece is transparent. It should just be the circle bit that you can see through, not around the edge of it. But I don't know how they would have done that exactly with the pieces available at the time. Um, the door is very simple and it does open. Obviously there's nothing inside because it's a facade set. But I like the curved shape of it and the build and how it uses the uh, ship, pirate ship wheel as the door opener. Which again is accurate to the show because it uses something similar. Although I feel like it's very oversized because on the actual show it wouldn't, be as, it wouldn't actually be bigger than the size of the entire door which is a bit crazy. I like how they've used different angled um, triangular plates to reach, move up to the top, but there is quite a bit of gap between each of them, which kind of bugs me, and it's not the best when it's a facade because you can see through. Also, I don't like how it's so studded still around here. I wish that was tiled off. And another thing I dislike is how easy this moves around because it just goes. Whoop. It doesn't. It's hard to. It. It's very difficult to stay straight up. If you hit it just slightly it falls because it's literally been held in by that. I wish they'd made this more solid and had it more insecure. But the, the actual build of it looks good so I'm not too fussed. Uh, I like these bits how they come out. These bricks that are these angled slope pieces that give some rigidness to the pineapple shape. And I do like the little um, plant elements at the bottom. They do look good as well. Again, not a fan of how many studs are exposed here, and I wish the, the doormat was a bit more interesting. Um, the leaves on the top look good. There's only four of them, which is probably enough, and the way it's attached actually works well as well. Although I wish it did look a bit more um, filled in, possibly, by maybe adding another two down here, smaller ones. But it's, it's fine. It works for what it is. 
it is a play set. I mean, this is not an adult UCS set, and they didn't even have the term UCS for LEGO at the time. I believe that if LEGO was making this in set now, it would be way, way better than it is, because I believe they could do a fully enclosed one, and it would be tiled off more. Although these bumps do work as studs for the nice prickly shape of a pineapple, but I still think that if it was more smooth and finished off, it would still be better. So if LEGO remakes the set, which hopefully someone on LEGO Ideas will get this approved, and then we do it, then this wouldn't just be a facade like this. And these are all stickers, by the way, and it just does not do it for me. I don't know, it just doesn't look that good from the inside at all, especially because of all the bit around the edge here, it just looks really untidy. I know it's very hard to get around that, even nowadays, but I feel like they could still do something better if they do it now, and I'm not a fan of these jagged, these wedge plates, how they're arranged, but I can understand these gaps, so to where you put the chairs and the bed and stuff. They can slide in these gaps like this. I'm not a huge fan and also don't like how close these are to the door because obviously you, they're not that unrealistic as well. Because and when you have SpongeBob's house in the show, his bed is upstairs, so it wouldn't even be downstairs at all. So it's very inaccurate. But I can't fault it too much. There's just a single cup there as an accessory as well. And then you've got this massive orange dish piece on the top of the set, which would be good for using for parts as well. And then the thing itself can be easily spread out like that, if you want it spread out. But there's no reason you wouldn't, it looks very bizarre like that. I wish there was something that could keep this, it all compact, rather than just digitally twisting it on these hinges. Because if you move it a little bit, just go knock it and it goes all like that, it looks very odd. Because there's very, like I say, very big gaps as it is, so if you knock it, it looks even worse. And also, I feel like this needs to be pushed down more than this. Um, it's not a lot else I can say, really. Um, the best thing, like I say, is the minifigures. The worst thing is probably the gappiness of it and the fact this moves around way too much. I would recommend this set, but mainly as a, as a kit for a kid more than an adult collector. I wish that they would redo this set for adult collectors. I feel like they could do something more detailed, a bit like how they did the Flintstones set in Ideas. I feel like that was a more finished off set than this. I know that even that wasn't perfect, but it did feel very at least smoothed off and there wasn't loads of gaps. So I wish they could do something like that with this. Maybe they will one day, I don't know, but this was made in 2009. So things were a lot better in LEGO's um, design abilities than they are at this point in time. Although obviously 2009 did have some good sets. But yeah, my favourite figure is probably still Spongebob. He's definitely the best. Not just because he's the main character, but I think he's the most fun looking character out of them. I love how they use this particular piece to make him shorter rather than having a weird head or something. That would just would make absolutely no sense at all. So I'm happy with how they did it. And the Gary build is really good as well. I love the shell print. Prints look good. It's not allowed, so I can say. This is a print as well, actually, I could say. This is a print, not a sticker. Which is good. I'm glad this is not a sticker. But yeah. Anyway, that's all I can really say about it. There's not a lot else I can need to say on this set. Um, it's good for probably use for parts. If you want to use it. If you want loads of orange parts, you could use this. Although, it would seem a bit stupid because this set these pieces would probably be easier to get in this color elsewhere in like classic boxes or whatever because it is still in a standard orange at the end of the day it's cool to get the red hinges but i think they'd probably be easier to get elsewhere as well but anyway these are just my thoughts on this set sticker there of gary mirror and patrick and that i have no idea what that is that's very odd and yeah, these are just my thoughts on this set. Feel free to like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.